Hi, welcome to EDUC 1050. This is our lecture that focuses on communities of practice. Now, what are communities of practice? Communities of practice, or COPs, is actually an idea that can be traced to Jean Lab and Etienne Wenger when they wrote a book which was entitled Situational Learning, Legitimate Peripheral Participation. This is the figure that you see in the screen. This book was published sometime in the 80s, and it actually looked at the phenomenon of how newcomers embed themselves and become part of an established community. This was the beginning of um, the idea of what communities of practice actually means. Later on, Etienne Wenger developed the original idea and then coined the term communities of practice, viewing it really as an important tool in identity, meaning, and making for individuals in the path of learning. So communities of practice, or COPs, is a concept that has become of absolute importance in the business world and in the last 10 years or so, it also has gained prominence in the field of education. This is the image of Etienne Wenger right here. And if you have a chance to, to talk to him about what are the core components of a COP, he will tell you that it comprises of domain and it has an identity defined by a shared domain of interest. There's also a community, and Etienne Wenger describes it as um, an effort in which pursuing the interest within the domain, members engage in joint activities and discussions, helping each other and sharing information in the process. And the last core component of a COP, according to the definition of Etienne Wenger, would be practice, where members of a community develop a shared repertoire of resources, experiences, stories, tools, ways of addressing recurring problems. In short, this is referred to as a shared practice. In the next few slides, we're going to take a look at the different interrelated characteristics. We are going to take a look at characteristics of COPs. First characteristic is referred to as mutual engagement. Through the participation in the community, the members establish norms. Uh, they build collaborative relationships. And this term is described as mutual engagement. These are the kinds of rules, the, the rules of engagement, if you would call it that, that members of a particular group, members of a particular community embrace. And these practices, these this, um, forms of engagement bind the members of the community as a social entity. In EDUC 1050, we try to actually implement COPs through our redesign of the entire course. If you notice, we have created groups that function an important role in the assessment tasks. You work through the sandpit, the group brainstorms, synergy, you practice, and then showcase, you refine. We hope that as you go through three rounds of sandpit, synergy, and showcase, the characteristic of mutual engagement, which is one of the defining typologies or types of COPs, become deeply embedded in your respective groups. In the lecture, I talked about the idea of um, a jigsaw activity. And this is an example of a jigsaw activity. When you are facing your classrooms, your secondary classrooms, you could actually have something like this slide in which one part addresses skills of uh, one particular nature in the sense the crossword puzzle will be attractive to those who are more inclined towards literacy, whereas the math questions will be those who are inclined to the STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. 
and the medical sciences. So here I have a crossword puzzle and here I have um, questions from that describe the across portions of the puzzle and those that describe the words that go down in the puzzle. And then on the other side I have a figure here, a table, the math scores of uh, students, Jordi, Iñaki, Carlos, Xavi, and Rafa. And then I have questions about what is the mean score, what is a variance, what is a standard deviation. This is an example of um, a jigsaw activity which we did in the lecture. Now, but the purpose of me doing this was actually to let you who were participating in the lecture actually start sharing norms, practices, rules of engagement. In your small groups, I ask you to solve this jigsaw problem. So in your group, you would say, okay, some of you should be doing the crossword puzzle, some of you should be doing the maths, and then after you've come up with the answer, then you teach each other. You could actually engage and try to do this uh, jigsaw uh, activity yourself. You, you, there's a printout to this lecture and you can um, try to solve the questions that you can find in this particular slide. Now, this is the part which talks about the math sections. If you actually go to this site that just appeared on the slide, you can key in these numbers and you will be able to get the answers to the questions. Mean score, variance, standard deviation, and the standard deviation for the sample. Again, all of this was just uh, an activity to try to harness mutual engagement that is a characteristic of communities of practice. The second characteristic, interrelated characteristic of COPs is what is referred to as joint enterprise. Through the interactions of members in a community, they create a shared understanding of what binds them together. This is what is referred to as joint enterprise. And this is negotiated and renegotiated by members. And it's also sometimes referred to as a domain of the community. In EDUC 1050, all of you are members of a group. We actually left you with no choice. The choice was for you to form your groups, but once you're part of that group, you're essentially working within that community. We hope that in working with your community, you come up with um, activities or events that you would that we will describe as your uh, mutual engagement area. We also hope that as you keep on working with each other, you also develop joint enterprise. When you do sandpit, moving on to synergy, there's a lot of renegotiation re that happens. And then when you hear feedback from your tutor and from your colleagues in your class, in your tutorial groups, more renegotiation happens. And really the subject matter that you're looking at, technology applied in education, can be arguably referred to as your domain. I gave another exercise in the lecture uh, which uh, again is divided into two sections. One is a crossword puzzle that addresses or attracts those in the literacy area and another one which is more of a math type of statistic question. Um, my supervisor asks me whether one of my brightest students, Victoria, could be sent to compete. And then I provided Victoria's scores in maths, in history, and in English. And the question I asked you in the lecture was, which one is your best subject? So part of the team in your joint enterprise, you really negotiate with each other, right? So how do we address this? So perhaps some of you did literacy before, maybe you can do the, the statistical section now, but you might say, no, this is not our strength, so let's stick to the literacy. And the other guys or the other members of the group or the community stick to the statistics questions. All right, so the crossword puzzle, asks you about um, safe and responsible use of ICT for number five across, um, um, free social networking website for number six across, this particular one is six, another word for omnipresent uh, for number seven across. Down you have another word for display or exhibit, this is number one down, 
Number two, something used for making mathematical calculations is number two down. Number three, existing or occurring at the same time. This is number three down. Number four, electronic devices capable of receiving information and data in a particular form and performing a sequence of observations. That would be number four down. And the integration of technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge. That would be number eight down. Now, in order for you to be able to answer this maths or statistics question, it would be good for you to be familiar with the z-score. Uh, and following the this algebraic function in which you key in the values in the variables that you see, you should be able to arrive at the z-score or what we refer to as what we refer to as a standardized score. Because here we showed you raw scores, it's not enough to be able to make comparisons, you need to standardize. And you standardize by incorporating the mean and the standard deviation. Again, a continuation of the earlier task. And this would be the z-score. And if you did it correctly, you would arrive at math as the best subject of Victoria. The third characteristic of a community of practice is what is referred to as a shared repertoire. This is the final characteristic as defined by Wenger. The community produces a set of communal resources. This is termed the shared repertoire. And this is used in the pursuit of the joint enterprise. And it can include both literal and symbolic meanings. Ideally, at this stage, working on two iterations uh, with your group and now undertaking the third one by completing the Paltoon. Previously, you did the Pinterest board, you did the Prezi, and now you're going to do the Paltoon. You would have already accumulated knowledge about each other to a point where you should be able to tap on a shared repertoire. Now, for our particular course, we will actually really live up to the idea of a community of practice. We will be creating a resource sharing portal, and we will invite all of you to share your resources, your Pinterest board, your Prezi, or your Powtoon. And we are actually in the process of finalizing this portal. But in the lecture, I actually sought your assistance in identifying an appropriate name. Would it be Edutrove, Resource Portal, Edu Exchange, Toolkit at 21? So we obtained several suggestions. Someone said the toolkit should be, the IET should be uppercase which was a, a clever suggestion. Someone suggested or asked, what does at 21 mean? And another student responded, we are the 21st century correctly. Someone said that Editro was clever. This is my personal favorite because I was the one who sort of thought about it. But when we asked for a raise of hands, what actually happened was that Edu Exchange seemed to be what everyone wanted to use as the name of this resource sharing portal. Pay attention to this space because we'll provide you with more information in relation to this COP, this actual example of shared repertoire that we were going to make. So the community of practice that we were going, that we intend to undertake will really be consistent with the definition of COP, which is uh, an activity or a group that it has characteristics or qualities of lifelong learning. Now, how can we apply COPs to educational contexts? Communities of practice are groups of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. In education, it has become one of the cornerstones of of lifelong learning, as mentioned earlier. It, and so many of the progressive educational systems have adopted COPs among teachers in schools and among students. Internally, the question for us is how do, can we organize educational experiences that ground school learning and practice through participation in communities around subject matters? This is a question that we will be confronted with when we go to schools on how we apply COPs to educational contexts. Externally, how do we connect the experience of students to actual practice through peripheral forms of participation in broader communities beyond the walls of the school? So our plan of creating this resource portal, which can be tapped by anyone from any part of the world, which you, the current EDUC 1050 students, will 
form part of is an example of how we can connect your experiences with others beyond your life at the university, beyond this particular course. Over the lifetime of students, how can we serve lifelong learning needs of students by organizing communities of practice focused on topics of continuing interest to students beyond the initial schooling period? These are the challenges that we will face in relation to enacting COPs in educational contexts. This final picture is, of course, myself with um, Etienne Wenger, the man behind the idea of COPs. He's a very friendly individual who's continually developing COPs. And the challenge for us is to try to see whether we could actually take his idea and see how we can enact it, implement, modify in our respective contexts. And that ends our lecture three, our conversation centering around communities of practice. Thank you very much.